Happy Thursday, gents and ladies. Once again, there's only one day left until the weekend, and only one weekend in the month, so we should all be proud of making it this far through quarantine. You know what I mean? Woo! With any luck, it'll end soon, and we'll all level up and earn that made it through quarantine badge. And if HQ can help by giving you something to do, then we're proud to ask you 12 questions and split up $5,000 amongst the winners. Like we're about to do right now. <laughs> yeah! Tonight, $5,000 is on the line. Will you power through the correct responses or be showered with invective and tonses? Tonses? Yeah, as always, we're shouting out a great charity while we're at it. Baltimore Corps, helping to build a more equitable city of Baltimore. The nonprofit Corps was founded in 2013 with one goal, pairing the most talented people with the world's most important challenges. It connects local talent to jobs, grants, and small business loans while promoting diversity and challenging biases. COVID-19 has hit the city hard, but Baltimore Corps has fully risen to the challenges as presented, leading in the effort to place qualified help into available pandemic response positions. Shout out to them. So HQ is matching tonight's prize money with a $5,000 donation to Baltimore Corps. You can find them at BaltimoreCorps.com. And yes, they do accept donations. So give what you can, all right? Here's their president and CEO, my main man, Fagan Harris, with a few words to say. Take it away, bro. Hi, HQDs. My name is Fagan Harris. I'm the president and CEO of Baltimore Corps. Our organization advances racial justice and equity by connecting our communities to opportunities in public service and social entrepreneurship. COVID-19 has revealed our country's vast inequities. Where we're located here in Baltimore City is among the most impacted areas of the entire pandemic. I hope you'll join us at Baltimore Core. You can find us at baltimorecore.org. Thank you for your time tonight. And good luck. Thank you so much, Fagan. That was a nice tie, too. We kind of match. We kind of match, dog. Yeah. HQ is pleased to be supporting your work. For sure. All right. Well, HQ has a new commitment to not starting too early or too late, okay? With that in mind, I'm going to wait just a little longer. Let those stragglers get on in here. They're sauntering in. It'd be mean to send somebody a push notification and then start the game without. You feel me? So real quick, I want to send a very, very happy birthday shout out to Grandma, a.k.a. The Bubster. She's turning 100 today. 100? Don't look a day over 60. You better work. You better work, Bubster! Woo! Oh, remember, uh, minimize your trips outside the home, okay? Wear a face mask when you do, and sanitize is good, but only when you don't have soap and water in 20 seconds. And hey, keep sending us your sanitizer breaks and Savage Question songs, because we love seeing every one of them, and as you know, sometimes we even pick them to feature. So, without further ado... <laughs> We're going to get into it. Question number one is coming up right now. So tell the people talking around you to be quiet so you can focus. Okay? Are you ready to do this? Are you ready? Let's go. Can't wait any longer. The questions have chewed through their restraints, and it's time to launch this ship. Here we go, babies. A question number one. Sandwiches are traditionally served between two pieces of what? Bread, lasagna, or pie? Hey, traditionally... Where you getting your sandwich? Hmm? What, what's it got? All right, now we're in America, where I can't guarantee no one's ever put ham and cheese between two pieces of pie. But John Montagu, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, started the trend of meat between bread. You heard what I said. Yeah, 75,643 in the place to be at question number one, getting it right, knocking it out of the park. Whoa, I could go for a sandwich right now. Yes, I could. Question number two, here we go. Which of these animated series has been on TV the longest? Arthur, Craig of the Creek, or Rick and Morty? I would think Arthur. I, I watch a lot of TV, so I know a lot of things about shows. When a cartoon hits a nerve, right? It can run seemingly forever. South Park and Family Guy started in the 20th century, and they still at it. But with a premiere date in 1996, pretty much only The Simpsons has been on longer than Arthur. A-D-W! 63,431 got it right. Arthur was that little aardvark everybody thought was like a beaver. And he recently went very viral for that fist meme. Yellow sweater with the fist. All right, question number three. Here we go. In which card game is a hand totaling 21 a winning result? Poker, blackjack, or back? Long card sharks. 
You got to get this one. Here we go. It doesn't even matter what the dealer has. Any player who's showing 21 wins the hand, okay? In fact, 21 is an alternative name for blackjack. 65,164. Got it right. Hit me! Uh. <laughs> yeah, babies! All right, question number four. In your face right now. Boom. Which Muppet usually has real human hands? Beaker, Dr. T, or Swedish shit? One of the Muppets has got real human hands. All right, when the Muppet performers are doing their best work, the line between human and Muppet sort of disappears. You know what I'm saying? At that moment, it doesn't even look strange to see some human hands popping up out to the Swedish chef's sleeves. Take a look at this. Yeah. making a puppet of corn and ready to send it to wound. Oh, the puppet of corn. Yeah, they don't have puppets with that kind of dexterity. That was real. Swedish chef, y'all. 55,737 got it right. Oh, I'm so proud of y'all. Woo! Question number five. For the children. I, 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 I. Question five. Question five. These are two different categories of vocabulary, to be sure. But with only 26 letters, you're going to get some crossover words here and there, okay? Like the word for the concave depression at the bottom of many wine bottles, the punt. Ooh! 38,604. Got it right at Q5. We got seven questions left to the prize money, okay? Kicking on to question number six. In the Statue of Liberty's official name, what is Liberty doing to the world? Enlightening, highlighting, or illuminating? If you're not sure, you can switch your answer before the time is up. Oh, too late. Okay, a gift from France to commemorate emancipation. The statue continues to light New York Harbor, greeting arriving ships and symbolically inspiring other nations. Appropriate to its name, Liberty, enlightening the world. My liberty. That's a savage request I need. 19,280 got it right. I see them extra lives getting dropped. That's what they're there for. All right, who's ready for question number seven? Let me hear you. All right. Founded by the singer slash pianist, the Ray Charles Foundation, helps individuals who are what? Blind, deaf, or paraplegic? Is it blind? Georgia. Georgia. Else. What's it gonna be, y'all? What's it be How amazing a human being was Ray Charles, huh? He barely considered himself disabled in, in any way. And he loved music so much that he considered deafness the real disability. Oh. And he started the foundation to help them. Oh my God! There's another savage question! 608 of you got it right. You thought it was hot because. You thought, what? Whoa! 680 y'all got it right. That was super savage. Super savage. Super savage. Huh? Super savage. All right. A lot of extra lives getting dropped. Aren't you glad you have some? Right? And you can get some now in the HQ shop or whenever you want. Question number eight. No, you feeling great? Super duper sorry to Eugene's wife who always looks over at him when I make noises. <laughs> Eugene, you gotta catch her one of these days and let me see how she look at you when I be singing, all right? Question number eight, here we go. The White House's mailing address is on a street named for what? The Bay State, the Empire State, or the Keystone State? What's it gonna be? All right, two different geography facts that you gotta know here, okay? On the one hand, President's Amazon orders go to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And Pennsylvania, for a variety of reasons, is called the Keystone State. 7,763 in the place to be at Q8. We're moving on to question number nine with four questions remaining. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let's get it. Which of these tasty brands originated in the United States? Hagen Dazs, Nestle, or Dosekis? 
Tasty brands. I guess they Which of these tasty, tasty brands? All right, it might sound uh, the most foreign of the whole bunch, but that's probably because it's made up Danish. Two Polish immigrants founded haagen you know, the ice cream empire. 4,030, got it right. Oh my gooseness. I could go for some ice cream right now. Why am I so hungry? I don't know. It's probably because I've been fasting. Question number 10, my friends. Time to get it in. Here we go. What was invented by someone asked to invent it as a prank? Ballpoint pen, frosted light bulb, or indoor garden? Ask your friend. Ask the bubster. She might know this one. She's been around 100 years. God bless her. Woo. All right, here we go. Inventors like a good prank as much as anyone, but sometimes it backfires, and you make life easier for millions of people. Like when Marvin Pipkin took his joke assignment and developed an acid etching process for the inside of light bulbs. Look at that. Frosted light bulb. Frosted bulbs are more than good. They're great. 1586 got it right at Q10, my friends. Question 11 is just around the river bend. Right here. Here we go. Q11, all dogs go to heaven. The first novel by an African American to join the Book of the Month Club features in which movie? American History X, Hidden Figures, or Selma? Lock in your answers, babies. People are saying B is black. Okay, Native Son. Richard Wright's story of poverty and struggle could easily share themes with anything here, but it's actually discussed by Edward Norton's troubled character in American History X. Take a look. We got a little clip. Oh, yeah. What's he got you reading? Hey, we got this essay exam on this book, Native Son. All in this one. one book. Native Son? What's that? I don't know that. Well, that's a big surprise. <laughs> oh, yeah. American yeah. History X. 932 of you are moving on to the final question of the game. I sense a chunky prize in your future. Oh, won't you take me to Money Town? Won't you take me to Money Town? Here we are. Money Town is one question away. All you got to do is get this one right, and I'm going to flip some money in your direction. You're welcome. I love you too. <laughs> I know somebody said that at home. It's, it's, one, it's probably my, my mom. Okay. <laughs> love you, mama. Question number 12. Where are you most likely to see a Brannock device? Factory, mall, or university? Y'all figure this out. Time is ticking. Brannock device. All right, there are no statues of Charles F. Brannock in city plazas, and his name is rarely invoked in commencement addresses, but he's touched your life if you've ever come into contact with a device that measures your foot at the shoe store at the mall. I still would have gotten that right. We have 486 winners of HQ Trivia, y'all. Let's go! <laughs> Okay, so the bulb. Uh -huh. the what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. What, what I'm talking about. Oh, that's exciting, huh? Look at you. Big money. Big money, big money, big money. $10.29 going out to 486 players. Kiana I. Juatone. Live free. Oh, Cleo, baby. Chloe, 2013, third string, Rocket Rafe, Kumiko Lisa, Kumiko Lisa, let me see some more, what's some more, okay, uh, wait, Aiden Forbes, Count Bro, Bru08, DLS, Christopher, uh, yes, yep, it's Jeff, Jay Walsh, Mick and Trick. it does, it's not doing that's it. crazy, we lost over 24,000 on that Ray Charles question. Most of them still watching now, which is pretty dope. I love and you so I much. That's more than uh, all of Madison Square Garden. That's crazy that y'all come here every day to get your mind tested and get that money. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, I hope you feel a little richer after that game. And if you didn't earn something, you must have learned something, right? And if you come back tomorrow and keep learning a fact a day, how long can it be until you win? That's that. The more you learn, the more you will earn. That's just knowledge is power. We ain't less than an hour. Hello. I smell good because I just took a shower. 
Woo, I got the power. <laughs> Sorry. That charity, again, is BaltimoreCore.org, solving big problems with equity and inclusivity. Okay? So check them out and maybe give a little if you can. Until next time, y'all, this is your main man, Money Flipping Matt Richards, saying, whoever said women love a man in uniform didn't work at Taco Bell. Not that there's anything wrong with Taco Bell, okay? You know what I'm saying? Depending on the lady. Box of Chalupas might get you a little something, something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>